Welcome to the Getting Started Guide on how to use Canvas along with your Palette 2. At the end of this video, you'll be well on your way to slicing with Canvas and printing with your Palette 2. Don't be alarmed if anything seen in this video changes. We are constantly making tweaks and adding features to improve Canvas. First, let's take a quick look at what Canvas is and what features it offers. Here we are on the Canvas webpage. Let's take a look at Canvas. Canvas is specifically built for multi-material slicing. Easily add color to your single file 3D models by digitally painting in Canvas. Canvas will save and organize all your printer and material settings. And with Canvas, you can easily share printer settings, painted models, and more. Now let's hop into Canvas and get started. Here we are in Canvas. This is going to be the view you will see once you've created your free account and logged in. Let's go ahead and create a new project. As you can see, we need to add a new printer. Let's go ahead and click that. After we click add new printer, we will get prompted to either choose a preset profile, create a blank profile, or we could import a profile from a different slicer. For now, we will create a blank profile. We will name it my printer and choose the icon that best represents our printer. As you can see, we have all of our basic printer settings. We can input our nozzle size, or input a Bowden tube length if our printer has one. We can choose whether or not our printer is a rectangular printer or a circular printer. We can then easily adjust the bed size values to fit our printer. We have the origin offsets. The start and end sequence scripts. And in the firmware tab, we can adjust the file type if you have a printer that accepts files other than G-code. There are also settings that you may need to adjust if you have a unique printer. Let's go ahead and click save. We are now prompted to add our new style profile. What we just created was a printer profile that contains only the printer settings. Style profiles are different from printer profiles in which they are where all the extrusion settings are saved. You might want different profiles for things that might change depending on the print, like infill, speed, layer height, or supports. Let's make a blank profile to see what it looks like. You can name it whatever you like. We will leave it as standard. In the general tab, we see the shell thickness, perimeters, and print speeds. In the layer height tab, we see our layer height and whether or not we want variable layer heights. In the extrusion tab, we see the extrusion parameters and retraction settings. In the infill tab, we see the infill density, the style of infill, and other infill settings. In the temperature and cooling tab, we see the printing temperature as well as the print bed temperature and cooling fan settings. In the first layer tab, we see the Z offset, first layer speed, and whether or not we want a skirt or brim or a raft. In the supports tab, we can change whether or not we want three different kind of support densities and other support settings. In the transition tab, we see whether or not we want a tower or not, the transition length, and other tower settings. If you're going to choose to import your slicer settings from a different slicer, this is what you'll see. It will automatically change the printer name to the same as the profile name of the slicer profile. As we see here, all of our settings were imported and placed into the proper fields on Canvas. And as we click save, it sends us into the style profile selection screen, where we will select which style profiles we wish to import with the slicer settings. And as we can see, it imported all three style profiles into three separate profiles. Now that we have all the profile settings in order, let's add palette to the mix. We will click add palette and choose palette two. And there are two settings for palette two, connected and accessory mode. We will choose accessory mode and click save. To continue, we navigate back to the main canvas screen and click new project. 
Here we are on the main window of Canvas. To add models, we simply click Add Models in the top left corner of the window. We see that there is a pop-up to indicate to us to upload files we wish to print. We simply click on the Multi-Material Models section and choose the files we want to upload. Another way to upload models you wish to print is to simply drag and drop the models into the corresponding section we wish to use. Let's say you were to select the single material section and you select the models you wish to use, but you wanted to make it a multi-material environment. All we would have to do to make it a multi-material environment would be simply select all the objects in the browser and click the Align and Group button just below. There is also the option of adding a single color model into Canvas and using our paint feature to make it multi-material. For more information on painting, check out our tutorial in the description. Some features on Canvas you would use would be renaming the objects in the browser, we can change our project name, You can simply show or hide groups or objects in the browser by simply clicking the eye icon. If you navigate to the toolbox and select the rotate option, you can easily rotate your objects or groups. Same as in the scale panel where you can scale your objects or groups. You can also use the indicators on the objects to scale or rotate the selected object. There is also a few functions just to the right of the toolbox that can auto-arrange anything in the environment, drop models directly to the bed, or lay a specific face down on the bed. If we select the color we want to change in the toolbox, we can easily choose which color we want to be represented. Let's select the colors that match our object names. Once you have all the colors you want, all you simply have to do is drag and drop the colors onto each separate body that you want colored. As you can see, to the left of the object being printed, the transition tower is automatically generated when we add more colors. If you're familiar with Chroma, there is a way to change the length in order to fit the tower in tighter places. In Canvas, we have that by simply selecting the tower and opening the scale function. And simply by dragging the indicators, we can manually change the way the tower is placed in the print area. When changing colors from one color to the next on a single nozzle, you have to run a certain amount of filament through to get a crisp color. In Canvas, you can select whether you want a transition tower, or if your printer allows it, you can use side transition that purges filament off to the side of the bed. When changing colors from one to the next, we measure that amount in the transition length value. The higher the value, the higher the amount of filament is used to transition between two colors. There is also variable transition lengths, just like in Chroma. If you want to change the transition length between black and yellow, as an example, you can increase the transition from black to yellow to allow the black to fully purge and decrease the transition from yellow to black. Back to our project. If we select the settings button at the top right corner of the window, we can see all the settings we made for the standard style profile. If we change any of these settings, they will not affect any other projects that are using the same style profile. The changes will only affect this current project. If you're happy with your settings changes you do in this project, you can update the main standard style profile as to save your changes. This will affect projects made with the standard style profile in the future. Now, all we do is click slice in the bottom right corner. Once we click that, the server begins slicing. After a moment, we will see our G-code in the print area with all the proper colors in place. On the right side of the browser, we have the toolpath preview to check that every layer is in order. Under the print summary on the left, we have the option to change the color by five different ways, as well as to show the retractions or travel movements. Now, all we have to do is click download.
For more information about Palette 2, check out our playlist on Palette 2 hardware setup and starting a print with Palette 2. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below or connect with us at support at mosaicmfg.com.